All right, and welcome to the FMEA Cost of Quality Analysis Tool. So this tool allows you to take a look at your prevention and detection and compare it up against your internal and external failure to help you make better decisions about where to spend when it comes to the world of quality. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of the tabs, and then we're gonna walk you through an example, and then we're gonna show you how you can enter your own data. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to how to use this tool. Now, in this example, we've pre-populated all of the data fields for you. So you have this as a filled out example. And in this example, you have each one of the boxes has what should go in each box. We have pre-populated some of the values to use as our example. And then we use this data sheet in order to calculate the KPIs. Now the KPIs are shown here, and there's a couple different ways to do it. You've got it numerically, you've got it in a bar graph, you've got it in some pie charts. And so what this tool does is it allows you to take your internal and external failures, as well as your appraisal and prevention costs, and represent them in terms of total spend so that you can make some more informed decisions. Now, once I get done with my example, you're going to fill out the same thing for your organization. We've included a template right here that allows you to do the exact same thing all of the fields have been pre-calculated there that you need to calculate. All you're going to have to do is put in your data. So you can go ahead, once you see how to use this tool, go in and put out your data and get your own KPI charts on this tab. So now let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to use a very simple example. We're going to use a molding operation. So we're going to be molding drinking cups. So primary to a drinking cup is the ability of the diameter, right, to be a certain inner diameter, right? You want a certain amount of fluid volume. You need a certain number of ounces to be there. And so what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to grab your failure effects grouped in your FMEA. So you'll see here, when it comes to drinking cups, if the cup requires 100% offline rework because the inner diameter was too low and some sorting at the customer facility, I'll go in and I'll take a look at the effects and you see how all of these have the same effect. So now we know that there are internal failure costs. These are things like scrap. So if the cup diameter is too small, yet we can rework it. This rework cost, we go through and we calculate what the rework cost is. And then when it gets to the customer, because some sorting will be required at the customer facility, we can calculate that cost at being now $5,000. So we put in our internal failure and our external failure cost, and then we isolate the causes. In our example here, there are four causes in which the diameter would become too small. The first one is tool wear. The second one is the wrong tool gets hung when the machine is set up. The third one, the operator loads the wrong recipe during startup. And the fourth one, during the run, the technician adjusts the tip temperature. So we go back into our historical data and we take a look at the corrective actions that we've had, the scrap data that we have, and we determined that we had this happen three times over a certain period. The period is up to you. So we know three times the tool has worn, leading to a small diameter, and this is the cost. So if you take this up here and you add that up three times, you're looking at $16,000 worth of internal failure, and you're looking at $15,000 over this time period for external failure. And again, these are pre-populated. And so what these pre-populated areas are telling you, this is what it cost you in rework cost. This is what it cost you at the customer on a certain basis. I like to go annually, but if your time frame is different, just make sure you are consistent. Now we know that we had zero times the wrong tool has been hung. So that's a good time. We also know there was one time that the operator loaded up the wrong recipe during startup. And again, that's our cost internally. That's our cost externally. And there were two times over the time period, the technician adjusted the tip temperature incorrectly. So we've got our causes that came directly from our FMEA. We've got our effects that came directly from our FMEA. And once we put in this data, these cells take over and they tell us that as a result of this cost, the total cost of quality 43%, 43.97% to be precise, is represented by internal failure cost, and 41% of my cost of quality is represented by external failure cost. Using the same FMEA, we're going to go a couple rows over, and we list out the preventions. Now, the preventions are in the FMEA. We have preventative maintenance checks to help with the tool wear. We have setup checks to make sure that the wrong tool wasn't hung. We have automated systems to pick the recipe based on part number, and we have in-process checks 
of the parameters during the shift to help make sure that our operators don't go around adjusting the parameters unnecessarily. So now we can calculate because we know who does it, how often they do it, and what the cost is we pay them per hour, we can calculate our preventions. So what this is telling me is that on a certain basis, in this case annually, $9,358 is spent on preventions of these particular failure causes. And the detection activity follows the same. You'll see the detection activity here. First and last piece, first piece checks, visual checks and shift change, end of shift visual checks. We know who's checking it. We know how often they're checking it. We know what we pay them to check it. And so we can look at the detection on an annualized basis as well. So on an annualized basis, because that's our time frame, we spend $1,434 on detection, $9,358 on prevention, $30,000 on external. And you see how this works. So now we can go one step further. And by the way, this is all current state, right? This is just what we know from history, we can add up everything from a cost of a poor quality side being internal and external failures. We then add up the prevention and appraisal. This gives us our total cost of quality, and then we can calculate the percentage spent on poor quality. So you see how these all do all of the calculations for you, right? Now this is current state. Now we're going to switch to future state here. We can take the second half of this chart and we can do the exact same thing here. We put in the cost from the effect, which we know, we put in the cost externally from the effect, which we know, we add in the causes, which we know, and now right here, we are asking management or whomever may be setting our goals to say what would be an acceptable number for say, the number of times the tool may wear. And you remember in our current state, it used to be three. They're saying this year, we would like to try for one. We'd like zero of these and zero of these, and we would want to get below to one of these. Now, these cells calculate based on the cost and based on the desired future state, what you would like to see. And you'll see here, we have a $10,000 shift in external cost of quality. So we're saying as a result of tool wear, we want only one instance of it, which means we should see this change in internal failure costs drop by $10,000. The same thing is true with external. We would see a drop by an even $10,000 here based on the cost externally, the number of times it's going to happen, and then we compare it to current state. What we're doing is we're setting a future target goal. Now, when we go over to the prevention, because nothing is ever free, we now can pitch or plan new preventions. As an example, we're going to increase the number or frequency of the preventative maintenance checks. We're going to ask for $4,000. That's going to be a change in prevention cost. We're going to increase that cost $880. However, because we haven't had any instances of hanging the wrong tool, we're going to offset that by reducing the setup checks, and that will save us three. 380. So really this column is about changing the prevention cost because nothing is ever free and you have to be able to balance risk and reward. All right, now let's go to detection. We're also going to increase in detection some way. First and last piece checks using a go no go gauge. That's going to happen. And as we go over here, we're going to add in continuous monitoring for key variables. And you'll notice over here, continuous monitoring works for $200 extra. So now these are going to calculate the same way. And what this is going to do, it's going to calculate the current state and the future state, and it's going to give us the potential ROI in terms of our previous strategy and our proposed future strategy. Now, let's go over to the example KPI charts and let's see what this does. Very simply, internal failure cost was 32,000. We've got a target of 10. External failure cost was 30,000. We've got a target of five. Our prevention activity was 9,358. We are going to increase that a little bit and our appraisal detection activity was 1,400. It's now 2,020. So we've seen an increase in our cost of quality, what we're gonna call our cost of good quality, let's say, but we're looking at a significant reduction in our cost of poor quality. So if we kind of surmise these things, total cost of poor quality, which is internal and external, was going to be 62. We're going to hunt 15,000 in our future state using this new preventative and detection methodology. Then we're going to increase the preventions and detections, because remember, this is the cost of good quality now, 10,000. We're going to go up to 12 
because nothing's ever free. But you see what this does to the overall cost. We are able to leverage the prevention and detection, which increases slightly, but sees a rapid decline in the cost of poor quality. Now, when we go to the bar charts, this is very simple. Current versus target. We're going to drop the internals. We're going to drop the externals. We're going to raise the preventions. We're going to raise the detections. If we do this well, we may raise the preventions and the detections, but we will drop the internal and external. And you can see the total cost of poor quality is going to drop like a rock from the light blue to the dark blue. Cost of quality, the good quality, is going to rise a little bit, but overall, you're going to come out ahead. So when we do this as a pie chart, you can obviously see the pie chart change, right? We're going to increase the prevention, the appraisals, and you see that the red piece here, which is internal failure cost, that drops, and external failure cost drops like a rock. Then you can look at it this way too. We can just split it here. Cost of poor and good quality, this was before. Look at how much was being eaten by the cost of poor quality. Now, as a result of a good prevention and detection strategy, we're hoping to increase the cost of this while decreasing the cost of external. All right, so now that you know what the charts are telling you, now it's time for you to fill out your own template. It's actually very simple. If I just came up with an example, let's say I'm working with a cutting operation, right? And I've got scrap 100% of the product that I make. And I know that my product is worth, say, $1,500 every time I do it. And I know that if it gets to the customer, they're going to sort and their average sort cost is $3,500. And I know this happens five times a year. Notice how it starts to pre-populate. Now I can grab my PFMEA with my control plan and I can do a lot with it. All right, let's go ahead and back that out here. You don't want me messing with your template. All right, that's a little bit on the FMEA and cost of quality tool. If you're looking for next steps, please visit us at plexusinternational.com for more education and resources. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one.